lovelies, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're returning subby, you're a day one, you are a regular degular. You're my baby, you're my lovely. Hi lovely, welcome back. It's so good to have you here. I'm so, so happy to have you here for the hundredth time because that's what day ones do, they show up for the hundredth time. And so I'm so, so happy that you're here. If you're new here, hello and welcome. Welcome to the lovely family. Welcome to the lovely gang. It's so, so good to have you here. If you're not subscribed now, nah, this is the moment where I'm just going to post so you do what you need to do. Because one thing about you guys, I, you guys, hmm, I know man, but you, y'all don't want to love on me, y'all don't want to subscribe, we've been stuck on 400 for a while now, I know, I know what is, what is going on, and what is going on, but, hi man guys, please subscribe, okay, please subscribe, at this point I'm not even going to say please consider subscribing, just do it, just do it. Be a Nike ambassador and do it, okay? Please subscribe because we need to get to 500 subscribers, then like 600, then like seven, eight, nine thousand, like hundred thousand. Please do subscribe, okay? We need to get the first thousand out of the way so that we can, you know, okay. Anyway, I'm done. I'm getting you guys and begging you to subscribe. <laughs> Yo, hi. Mm -mm. But anyway, thank you so much. If you've subscribed, I really, really, really genuinely appreciate it. 400 is such a huge milestone for uh, for us because, guys, imagine being in a room with 400 people. Those are a lot of people. That is an incredible number of people. Even if you had to put 400 people, that would do so much. And that's how I see each and every one of you guys that is part of the lovely gang. And I appreciate you guys so much because I'm just like, what? 400 people on the internet think I'm cool. I'm cool enough to subscribe. Guys, I appreciate you guys so much. What? Thank you. Thank you. So without rumbling, I've wasted three minutes rumbling, but it's not rumbling guys. Subscribe. I Anyway, guys, um, so yeah, as you can see from the title of this video, we are doing the 10 lessons I've learned in business, and I'm adding two more bonus points, so they're going to be tough. But you know, the more, the more, the more, the merrier. Yes, the more, the merrier. <laughs> anyway, guys, let's just get into it. So, for those of you guys that don't have a bit of context, um, growing up, I've always been doubled in business activities um in primary school i s always sold when i got to upper primary i always sold stuff when i got to my upper primary i used to help miss flower maids with the tax shop and then you know high school i was selling things illegally you know but <laughs> and when i mean illegally it's just like we're not allowed to sell in the hostel premises but your girl she used to do it she used to do it and yeah and my clients also at the mo at the, at the time used to love the fact that they had access to snacks when they needed it without the hassle of having to go buy the tax shop the next day because that was only means once you're in the hostel you are on lockdown you're only going back tomorrow to school so i think it was a win-win for everybody and i never got caught actually here never ever <laughs> But anyways, I'm not proud of myself, but it's whatever, man, guys, it's whatever. And yeah, uh, upon completing high school, I obviously doubled in different businesses. Some did not work out, some I gave up on, some I just realized like, mm, this is not for me. I was uninterested and I left that ship. But this is an embodiment of the lessons I've learned on this entrepreneurial journey that i've been on since forever since i was a child and also um these are some of the lessons i've learned watching my mom do business my mom has always done business and some of those lessons i obviously learned from there but without rumbling again let's just get into it so the first lesson i've learned in business is sorry guys i'm looking down because i put the i wrote the things here on my phone the first lesson i've learned in business is that your last work may be your best work in the moment but in hindsight you always wish you did 
something different and i don't know if this is only for me but i see a lot of i've, I've realized a lot of actors also say this like no i don't watch myself um I, they don't watch their own work once they've shot a movie or whatever they just move on they don't sit and watch it because you have moments where you cringe you're like mm, oh, i wish i had not done that i wish i had done this differently and i think it's the same in business like in hindsight especially if you're in a creative business where you have to create something i think you always have that i should have done this i think this um this method would have worked better and even if the client is satisfied you always have that i should have done better i could have done better here and i think for the longest of time i've beaten myself up for that i was just like what how did i not figure that i was supposed to do this and um this is a conversation that i have with my sister who's also in business and she always reassures me that listen the your best work in the moment will not be your best work when you know better and that is that guys so unfortunately yeah even if you even if it's your best work and the client is absolutely happy i feel like for me personally when i go look back i'm always like maybe in the interaction i could have said something instead of the other you know you know there's always those like i could have done better you know and i think it's it's with everything in life you always feel like i don't know if it's just me but i always feel like there are certain things i could have handled better there are certain um deals i could have gotten better out of you know there's always just that but um it's one thing that i've learned to live with and it's 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 a hard pill to swallow but it is just what it is okay then the second lesson i've learned is that it's incredibly hard to work with people but it's also such a fulfilling experience at the same time so one of the things that is for sure is that people are not easy it's just very hard dealing with people okay but that's because naturally as people we are wired differently you know what is normal for me is not normal for you what is etiquette for me is not etiquette for you so those small you know wiring issues make us so different like it, it makes us so so different and i think that makes it adds a layer of complexity to human beings and uh, one thing i've learned in business or doing business is just that you have to have incredible human skills to navigate dealing with people because it's really hard okay sometimes you are the hard person difficult person sometimes it's the client but sometimes it's the suppliers you know it's not always the client sometimes it's the suppliers sometimes it's the photographers sometimes it's the the workers hey man you know it's it's people people you know people that you have to deal with but um it's also such a fulfilling experience to interact with human beings to listen to their stories you know like in the type of business you are you know people always sit down and then while you're doing fittings they share their experiences in life and you learn so much and it's also such a fulfilling experience to know that you get you have touched so many lives you continuously touch so many lives you 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 impact you're an impactful person you have an impact in their lives in society it's such a fulfilling experience to know that you make a difference you know you being an entrepreneur makes a difference and you know you sometimes you just meet people that become your family i've like so many clients that i've met and they're like my big sisters they're like my my friends they're like my sisters they're like my brothers you know like you 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 and it's experiences and people you wouldn't have met otherwise had you not been doing it business so i think the good and the bad you know they are on a so but the good i feel always um outlives the bad experiences that you have dealing with people but i think also in if anything my analogy is always this you and your mother and your brothers and your siblings basically you and your siblings and your parents you get on each other's nerves what about like a whole stranger like a whole new stranger that doesn't understand you you know people that are in your family you understand each other you grew up in the same environment you can relate to things because you have grown in the same environment although you might not filter things the same when you're subconscious 
you have definitely been in the same environment exposed to the same thing so you understand the other person better now imagine like a complete stranger so it's bound to happen so that's always what i tell myself like those things are bound to happen but you know what like a phoenix you rise you keep trying again and yeah and then um the third lesson that i've learned is that um you need to save for rainy days and you need to have an emergency fund this is so important like so so important and if anything i think COVID has reiterated that you know and it has solidified it that it's so important for a business person for a business to save like you need to save and have emergency funds so i think one thing i've, I've realized i don't know if it's just like with namibians but i think um if there's anything i've realized doing business is like people always think like for example if i charge a product 500 for example if i charge a product 500 and the materials are for example 150 i think people have this analogy of thinking that oh my god she's making 350 dollar profit i need to break this thing down that's not how it happens guys so when you get the 350 you need to one put money in your reserve two in your human capital account if you have employees three from that 350 you're splitting it and then three you need to put money in your um emergency um account okay so and also just like you need to have a miscellaneous account if you need anything urgently so that 300 is not profit guys it has to be split into those things and at the end of the day each account will probably get a hundred hundred depending on the ratios in which you are sharing it each account will probably get a hundred hundred and then the other one will get a 15 and that's not profit it's not your profit it's not your profit because at the end of the day you need to reinvest in the business where is the money going to come from from reinvesting in the business it's going to come from that money that you're saving and if you don't save up if you think that 350 is profit i get news for you baby that ain't profit that's money for the business and in that 350 i probably only own a 50 dollars because another hundred is going to my employees and then the other hundred is going to savings the other hundred is going to the emergency fund you get you get so it's really really important to save and this is something i've learned the hard way uh, you 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 need to save okay you need to save uh, to have a savings account and matter of fact i would actually stretch it out to say you need to have an investment account as a business you need to have money where you are invest you need to invest your money somewhere else out, outside of in the business itself you can invest in the business in terms of buying um, equipment upgrading your softwares whatever you use you know but you also need an investment whether it's in an account whether it's in buying shares you do need that extra um stream of income and if anything if you can supplement your business then do that because it's going to save you it's going to come in handy in rainy days so for example what i've in what i'm incorporating now in my business is um i've started selling fabrics you know so that fabric money is not money that i'm just going to be like using that money is going to go into my savings account that we're going to use for investing in the business and whatever we need to do that we don't have resources for so if you can supplement your business like that then just do it baby and i've rumbled i'm so passionate about this thing <laughs> the pressure is so worth that <laughs> the fourth thing is some, some clients even if you do your best to them it will not be enough and that's okay sometimes but it's important to strive for excellence i think this is also like one of those things once in a while you deal with like a really really difficult client that also to a point you can give them your best because um you even if you wanted to give them your best especially if you're a creator because of the way your mind will be set up it would be so hard to give them your best and i think sometimes you you do experience difficult clients that even when you do your best it's really not their best and that's okay guys that's okay because people have different standards okay people have different standards and work ethic and unfortunately sometimes their work ethic and your work ethic will just not match they'll feel like your work ethic is not on par but that's also okay because you also meet clients 
whom you feel like their work ethic is not on par with yours and that's really okay but i think at the end of the day strive for excellence strive to give this clients the best of you the best that you can give them and yeah if it doesn't work it doesn't work and that's just life let me just give you an analogy so for example if you go with this is one of the things i genuinely love doing i love exp um sharing my ratings my experiences on google so you'd find places that have like 4.9 and out of 50 people you'll find one person that hasn't experienced a bad thing that doesn't make the establishment a bad thing but that also doesn't invalidate that person's experience at that establishment so i think it's just the same in business just because you got one person that's unhappy even when you've given them your best doesn't mean you're a bad business or um or you haven't done the best for them but it also doesn't invalidate that person's experience because at the end of the day like i said standards are different and it's okay i think the best you can do in that in that instance or that scenario is really just to take the lessons and learn from it and grow from it yeah and then the fifth one um the fifth one is you'll make a list of good and bad financial and business decisions but like a phoenix you'll need to rise so this is in particular something very i think a lot of people if you've doubled in different businesses you've experienced this you have made some really good business decisions but you've also made some really bad business decisions and some businesses are not even bad decisions it's just like the environment the climate that you're in does not allow for that business to thrive you know or you just did not know better but the business was initially a good idea but you did not know better maybe the way you handled the business you could have done so much better but i think um like a phoenix you need to rise after experiencing or after going through whatever you went through you need to rise you need to come back stronger put yourself together and come back stronger because in life i feel like you'll make some good business decisions and some really bad ones and when you make the bad ones you learn lessons that's the most important thing and so i i really really firmly believe that there's nothing like bad business decisions it's always like opportunities for learning you know so i think yeah if you make a bad business decision especially financially guys i i've made like some really really bad financial decisions you know i've invested in things that haven't worked i've like tried things i've bought things that were just like but if anything i've learned i've learned the person i was then is not the person i am now the knowledge i have then is not the knowledge i have now and even if i was to embark on another business right now i am more equipped better than when i was younger and i didn't know so many things so i think also like you 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 really get to learn those bad experiences or bad decisions that you make they teach you a thing or two if you are willing to learn and you're ready to learn but yeah everything guys business is not supposed to be like can i be your fairy tale promise i will love you more guys that's not what business is promising no you you need you will have struggles guys you'll have struggles but like a phoenix you need to rise you need to rise and you need to learn and unlearn and relearn okay and then the next one <laughs> number six is people's skills are incredibly necessary to manage a business it is guys it is human skills second to none like guys i feel like there are some people that have entrepreneurial skills and that's good to have but there are also people that have good skill uh, good human skills and when you combine those two you have the perfect recipe okay and when i mean people skills i don't mean like being a people pleaser and that type of thing but i just mean when you have like good people etiquette and you have entrepreneurial skills like my guy my guy you have the recipe you have the winning recipe the kfc one bona that's the one you have you are going there you are going to cruise you're going to the places you're going there 
so i think that's really really important to have because like i said you you deal with you meet so many people okay you meet so many people clients business acquaintances suppliers employees interns or whatever you may have you meet so many people and i think your business not your business skill but your people skill set you apart and it helps you um handle and navigate whatever um hi guys english english but guys yeah like i was saying it will help you navigate um any situations or circumstances that you might come across if you have really good human skills and also like at the end of the day one thing i've realized with dealing with human beings is like if you have good human skills a lot of situations can be avoided you know if you if you're able to communicate your point across very well um if you know when you must walk away from an argument if you know um when you need to walk away from a business deal all those things when you know those things and when you know how to communicate how to listen how to learn how to unlearn I think a lot of those things are avoided here and also when you have people's etiquette it just makes it so much easier also the relations that you build with for example your suppliers your clients your employees it's a very long lasting one when you have human skills because for example if you're in the business and something goes wrong your employees are not going to try and hide it from you whatever went wrong they're rather gonna come to you and speak to you and try so you guys can all find an, a solution compared to like for example if um, and an employee, for example, um, cuts a client's dress or a client's suit. So instead of them trying to hide and fix that behind your back, if you have good human skills, trust and believe they're going to come to you so that you guys can find like a solution to that problem. And I think, for example, that's just one of the reasons why it's so necessary to have good human skills or people skills when you're um, in business. Number seven. <laughs> Sometimes you'll fail at business, but you'll always learn lessons. And I think I've I've really spoken about this passionately. But yeah, I feel like sometimes you'll fail at businesses, but you learn lessons. I don't feel like you'll ever go into a space and fail at it and not learn. Like you will learn, you'll learn where you went wrong. And most importantly, you'll learn how that space operates. And I think that's the most important thing. Guys, the most important thing that you ever have man, is experience. These theoretical things, <laughs> it's good to have. It's good to know the th theoretical knowledge, but to have the experience of having operated in a certain sector, in a certain space, and knowing how things are done, guys, that is leverage. It's leverage on a different level because you are literally ahead in terms of how to do this thing compared to people that have the theoretical knowledge so even if you're to go in business with somebody that studied business trust and believe you probably do better than the person that studied business because the reality of being in a classroom and being taught law commercial law and being in a business and being dragged to court is two different things because the experience you'll get being dragged to court and being taught law commercial law is it's two different things so i would say it's always you, you learn lessons and it's very important to note down those lessons it's very important to be cognizant of that lessons and i always say like whenever a business fail guys do a post-mortem analysis on as to why your business fail like sit down and write down like why do you think your business failed what could have you done better what did you do that perhaps you thought was the winning recipe but wasn't the winning recipe so i think it's really important to have those conversations here eh? because you learn like fail business failures is always like a learning curve and i think that's one thing i've learned in business is that you're constantly learning and learning even with the failures it's it's a constant learning thing number eight to find your personal and niche you have to try it's a trial and error thing guys this is so true the amount of businesses i've doubled in to actually say like okay this is what i'm so passionate about i'm going to give this one my all i think it's it's taken me a while it's taken me a while but i think i've, I've found that one thing but obviously i just don't want to do one thing i want to do everything <laughs> so there are things that i'm currently learning that i'm currently 
improving one because i want to go into certain businesses and i need like, i feel like i need to be equipped for it um whether it's by theory like you know studying those things or like going speaking to people that have been in those in that sector or in that space that can share their knowledge and um yeah so guys trial and error nobody has done this whatever business you're going to start now it's the first time you're going to start it and so it's just trial and error so every day you wake up it's a new day just know that it's a trial and error day like it's a trial and error day that's that's the one thing that keeps me sane knowing that even if i failed i i didn't know this knowledge yesterday but today i know it so tomorrow i'm not going to re repeat the same mistake because now i know better you understand so yeah number nine this one will be controversial but it's okay to fire clients guys <laughs> guys i swear it's okay to fire a client it is okay i'm coming to you and saying it is okay to fire a client clients are allowed to fire service providers so you're also allowed to fire clients okay i don't mean like obviously um with them but like it's good to know that you'll never work with certain people even if the earth was to shake and to move you would just never you would just never nothing will make you nobody will make you and that's the beauty of doing business it's good to know that you can choose who to work with and who not to work with okay so some people text you so much emotionally and mentally that it is not even even the amount of money they pay you is not worth it so certain people like that just fire them guys i've said it with my chest fire the customer fire the supplier fire the employee whoever it is fire them fire them mm? let them go because at the end of the day guys you need to be mentally fit to run a business and i i genuinely genuinely don't think like you can have clients suppliers and employees and still be mentally fit no so choose yourself choose your mental wealth being and choose your mental wellness and just fire the customer like let them go fire them fire them like that's the one thing i'm not being apologetic about and if anything if even anybody wants to come for me guys even the lodges the restaurants the businesses you go to big and pay spa there when you're entering it says right of admission is reserved for the owner of the business meaning they allow who to go in their business if they don't want you there you'll be chuffed out so do the same with your business whether it's a supplier choop, show them the way but guys also now this comes with great responsibility to be honest it doesn't mean that at the slightest inconvenience you must fire people no 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 guys there are grounds for firing people even employees there are grounds you can't just say no they've inconvenienced me or my client let me fire them i ah, know guys that's not how it works you need to be responsible you need to sit and think why do i want to fire this client have they really done an offense that warrants them to be fired why do i want to fire this employee have they really done a warrant that you know where did i go wrong where could i handle this um better if you were to redo the transaction or whatever you know how would you handle it better or prevent it from going there i feel like for me grants to fire somebody is like when their personalities are just like off ish for example if you're my employee and you know the basics you know of dealing with clients and stuff you're not getting it for me that is gr because in my business it's oriented around clients okay the main focus of the business is the client the client needs to be happy so if you're one that does not make my clients happy you do not deliver you you don't your work ethic is not there the quality of your work for me that's a worry for being fired and also just like if you're a customer and for example you're very rude you you, you you look down on people you are you know you're just obnoxious if anything i think like for me those are grounds for firing you as a client personally number 10 is you will never reach a learning top the top of one learning mountain is the bottom of another there is a constant learning 
and learning and relearning to do in business and this is so profound guys this is incredibly profound because i feel like there is never a point where you'll sit and say oh i know everything because even if you know everything theoretically practically you will not and i i feel like i firmly believe you can never learn or you can never know everything practically it, there's no way today you learn this trick and it will work for the first six months and then later you're just like mm, it's not giving you what it must can give i need to find another one you know then you go back you go fight you go learn you come back with another one and i feel like that's also how life should be you should constantly strive to for excellence you should constantly learn you know every time i look at things i've done like the businesses the transactions, i'm just like <laughs> i'm just like oh my god oh my god what was i doing but if anything the beauty of those is just that the people that come after always experience better and make it a point to not repeat the mistakes i've done in my business and i think that's the beauty of it and i feel like if anything you can never reach a learning mountain when you have learned for example how to for example you've learned how to make posters then when you get to that peak of like being really good then you maybe say ah, now i need to learn how to make websites and then you get to the websites and you're like okay i've learned i know how to use um and maybe i make my websites using fifa or whatever maybe let me learn how to use you know a different platform so i think you never get to a learning peak in in business you're constantly learning and unlearning through experiences you know through practicals and it's a constant thing of relearning and unlearning relearning and unlearning and yeah that's the same as as life you're constantly learning and unlearning and relearning if at least if you want to be like good at what you do if you really really strive to be good at what you do and for me that is so important i don't want to do mediocre guys guys i feel like my ancestors will be rolling in their graves if i do mediocre things you know even the god that puts it in me will be like what are you doing what are you doing have you not done this mistake yesterday have you not learned from yesterday so i think it's so important for me to constantly constantly try to put my best foot in my best effort forward and yeah that's what i've learned and it's so critical and imperative in business this is number 11 guys so next lesson i've learned is sometimes you are wrong the supplier the client the employee are right and just because you are the owner of the business doesn't mean that you'll always be right um this is a difficult and hard pill to swallow okay guys like it's so hard to swallow to admit that you are the problem and sometimes you you the owner of a business you are really the problem in acrimony you are the one that is wrong so sometimes it's so hard to admit that but um when you start admitting those things it's the beginning of your learning and your improvement and your betterment and just your growth that's where it starts that's the catalyst that will catapult your growth when you know to admit when you were wrong you understand and it's so important for entrepreneurs to know that this time i was the wrong one in acrimony mina d i'm the problem you know and um i i i can do better and yeah like i said guys trial and error we are doing this thing for the first time so when you know that you're wrong and learn learn and relearn constantly relearn some lessons you have to relearn them by re-practicing those things you need to keep practicing those things for them to stick some things you have to unlearn but sometimes you are the wrong one like you are the problem and um sometimes you have to to check the pattern are you the common denominator even if you're not the common denominator maybe this one time you are the denominator you know so sometimes it's really really important to sit and um have introspect and see what went wrong was it you was it the the the, the other person the other party but in business sometimes as the owners we can also be wrong we can make 
bad decisions that affect our businesses but at the end of the day the most valuable thing you will take from that is the lesson so you need to take that lesson and unlearn relearn and learn again and then number 12 to wrap it up if you're watching till this point i just want to say you might a day one a regular day regular a baby of mine a love of my life <laughs> And then the last one, which is a bonus, number 12, is just emotional intelligence is a must-have in business. <laughs> because they'll test you. Hi. Bye. Guys, they'll test you. And sometimes it's not even them. Sometimes it's just life. Sometimes it's COVID that will test you. Sometimes it's the Omicron that will test you. It's not the people. It's the Omicron. Sometimes it's the process of things that will test you. Hmm? Sometimes it's the school that will test you, but guys, just have emotional intelligence to know that these two shall pass. These two shall pass and show up in a very gracious, your most gracious you that you can show up with in that situation. Show up in that situation because I feel like when you have emotional intelligence, you can handle things with so much grace. You can show up with so so much grace in situations and emotional intelligence just makes that the way you deal with it it makes that situation so much lighter so much better so much yeah it just makes it softer lighter and easy to get over so guys in any situation i feel like when you're faced with the obstacles have emotional intelligence discipline and most importantly just practice your emotional intelligence because it goes a long way guys it does go a long way to know when not to speak to know when not to answer to know when to speak to know what to speak to know not to react because your emotions are running high to know when to you know take yourself out of a situation to go check yourself so in and, and that you can only do if you have emotional intelligence and it goes a long way in business okay it's like people skills it takes you a very long way in business and i think also just another one that i've learned is guys if you can improve your knowledge by going to school do it guys do it when i started doing business i didn't have business i didn't learn business but now i'm currently studying business and what best decision i've ever made i i don't regret it 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 might be a bit tricky to balance the two school and business but if you can improve yourself in that way guys every opportunity you have to improve yourself in this life now in this business thing now take it if you can go to school to go learn this thing go learn go and learn okay if you can go to an upgrade course go and learn like i've learned so much doing this business course that i'm doing now i've learned so much and the fact that it's not a short course it's actually like a four-year course i've learned so much and the the course that i've done before the states it really really helped you know but having to actually study business it has opened my mind to so many opportunities you know it just it uh, it has help me you know to have a community lecturers to speak to when i have an issue and it, it it just it makes you a better person guys so the opportunity you have to learn please take it go for that course to upgrade yourself just just do the things guys do it be a nike ambassador i've said it in the beginning now i'm gonna say it now to reiterate it to solidify it guys it, strive for excellence want to improve yourself go to school take the course upgrade your course if you can't afford it like go and um shella like go and tell somebody that is doing what you're doing but they're so much better than you go there and volunteer for a month for a week just so you learn like you learn because guys you learn so much when you are willing to learn and that makes you a better person that makes you a better entrepreneur and those are my parting words with you and yeah if you're watching till here i just have so much love for you honestly like i just have so much love for you like my love for you is endless <laughs> but anyway thank you so much for watching till this point i love you guys so so much i hope you subscribed like at this point of this video you must be subscribed because if you're not subscribed then i don't know i don't know what is the matter of the problem but something clearly is off
it's off and he said me you are the one wrong in acrimony why are you not subscribing <laughs> why are you not subscribing in acrimony you're the wrong one why are you not subscribing to my channel but anyway guys i love you guys so much thank you so much for watching this video i'll see you guys on my next one